Um, I was, I'm going to change this, this up a bit. I was going to do like, I like to do a bit of a funny story to start, make everyone, you know, have a bit of a chuckle to start. But I genuinely believe that as John went after intercession, that we are actually interceding this service for the things of heaven. That actually, as we talk about the kingdom, we are interceding. And so I'm not going to start with a funny story because the truth is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God confuses me to no end. It works in ways that I do not fully get. I do not fully understand. I remember the first time uh, being in a service where I watched someone who had never walked in their life, who was in a wheelchair their whole life, get up and run around an auditorium. And I went, what is this? What is this Jesus? You know, I remember seeing um, people who had asthma so they couldn't run, running back and forth without getting asthma attacks that would send them to hospital. I remember having friends who um, were contending for a baby and literally could not have it. Biologically, they could not have a baby. Neither of them could do it. And they ended up conceiving and having a baby. And it's the kingdom that I don't understand because it works in a way that is completely different uh, to what we see in the world and what we expect of people in the world. The kingdom is just so confusing. And I don't know if you've ever had a time where you're like, how? How has God done this? What has he done? What is going on? But the kingdom of God has done something that I did not know or expect, and it has worked completely differently to what my natural thought patterns would have said it would have. That is the God we serve. It is one that is operating in a way that is different to how we would operate, and it's better. It's so much better. All right, Pastor John started the series, The Blessed Life, last week, and um, I have the privilege today to share on Matthew 5, 1 to 11. It is potentially the greatest sermon ever preached, Jesus speaking about the kingdom of God, and I have to preach the greatest sermon that was ever preached, and I don't like it. It's, very, it's a big burden. I don't think I can say it better than Jesus. He's too good. But the beauty of this passage is what we're going to look at. The wonder of it, the upside down heaven thinking that happens in the kingdom of God is what Jesus is about to be preaching on. What we considered blessed is so different in the natural to what Jesus is about to say. And so as we read this scripture, I just want you to take it in, realizing that this is not the way the world works. This is not how it happens out there. Not even the slightest bit. And when it does happen like this, it's because Holy Spirit is in the midst doing the things that only He can do. And so let's read this together. But before I do that, I just want to make note of this one thing. Before we get to the Beatitudes, um, the context of this is Jesus has uh, come out of Egypt where he was born. He gets baptized. He goes through water. And then he goes into the desert and he comes out of the desert and preaches this message. And if you know your scripture, you might recognize that is the exact same order as the people of Israel had as they went out from Egypt through the water into the desert and into the promised land. He's actually replicating what the people of Israel did and he's about to establish what the new covenant looks like. Just like God establishes right before the people enter into the promised land what his covenant would look like in the Old Testament. And that is the context in which we're going to read this passage. And so let's read it together. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Just reading over that list, it's, it's very obvious that this is not how the world works, right? Like, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who's, who are meek. So often we trample on those who are meek. This is completely the opposite of how the world works, and yet Jesus is saying, blessed is those. And so this morning I want to start with the first section, uh, which we would call maybe the, the revelation of need. The first sort of set of Beatitudes, it's, it's kind of important to find what blessed is. You know, it can also be translated as wonderful news. So Jesus is saying, the wonderful news is that those who are poor in spirit will, that those who mourn will. This is wonderful news that he is sharing, that they are blessed, that they will be blessed in the kingdom. And we have this revelation of need that happens in these first Beatitudes. I don't know if you noticed, but the first one is poor in spirit. And we can think of that as an earthly wealth, but Jesus is trying to push a bit further. He's saying, blessed are those that have a revelation of what they lack that I have. Blessed are those who recognize that before me, they are poor in spirit. They are poor in the kingdom. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. It's, it's this revelation that as we realize that without God, without Jesus, without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, we are poor, we are destitute, we could be the richest person on this earth, but in terms of the kingdom, we have nothing. And it is Jesus who comes in and it's our poorness of spirit, it's that revelation of need, that we need Him that brings about the wonderful news that the kingdom of heaven is for those who have a revelation of the need for him. And then you go to blessed is those who mourn. And yes, this is for people who are mourning the people we lost, but it actually goes further. It goes, if you are poor in spirit, you recognize the gap, you recognize the sin and you mourn the sin that is in the earth. You recognize the need for Jesus because you see the things that are not of him, not of the kingdom, and you mourn them. Again, a revelation of a need that draws you to the kingdom. And the final one, blessed are the meek, because the ones who are poor in spirit, who mourn the sin on the earth, will be meek and be disciples. It is not that we will be trampled over, but rather it is a recognition that the kingdom is greater than what is currently present in the natural earth. Blessed is those who are meek, who have a realization of the greatness of the, of the, of the Lord over the world and always constantly point to that. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the kingdom. And so, for all of us, there is a revelation of the need for the kingdom of God. And it is that need, that lack of something that draws us into the kingdom through the prompting of the Holy Spirit that actually we lack without the Lord. And with that, we need to understand that there actually needs to be this tension of need in our lives, that actually we know we are nothing without Him. We know that there is nothing greater than Him. We know that we are poor in the heavenlies without Him. And it leads us to mourn over the things that are not of Him and to follow in His footsteps. Blessed are the meek. 
And so we need a revelation of the need for Jesus, the need for the kingdom. What is the kingdom? It is Jesus' reality, heaven's reality brought into the earth, and He is proclaiming it here and now. It is not just for when He returns, but as He stands there and He preaches that message, He says, the kingdom of God is here and now, not just in the future. And it is heaven's reality crashing in on us. And it's a revelation that as we, we understand the kingdom, as we go after the things of kingdom, that we lack things because of the natural, because of sin. And we look towards the kingdom and it breaking through in the here and now, not just later. And so blessed are those who have that revelation. We need a revelation of need. You know, maybe this morning you're actually feeling that or you're contending for that like we, we prayed for before, this, this recognition that the natural, the world, it sometimes is an unfair, sinful place in which we don't see the fullness of the kingdom and we are contending and realizing the need we have for God to sustain, to heal, to bring miracles, to see the kingdom come in its fullness. That is what we've been doing as we prayed for people today. It is a recognition that the kingdom is greater and we are, we are going after the things of the kingdom, not of the natural. We need a revelation of the need. Back when I was um, a new youth leader, just graduated high school, um, we did this thing where we initiated all of the new youth leaders to being youth leaders, right? We did it on a Friday night and all the new youth leaders had challenges they had to do. Really, it was just ways to humiliate the new youth leaders, to really humble them down before um, they led. Uh, and so, you know, stuff like uh, taping us up to poles to be used as flags for capture the flag, you know, just um, easy, simple stuff like that. Um, my one was a bit interesting. Remember, this is back in the day. It's a bit different now. Um, if you've been in youth at least 10 years ago, you'll understand. Um, but what they did was they stapled uh, lollies to my shirt, like heaps and heaps of lollies. They put the shirt on me and they told me beforehand uh, that what we're going to do is we're going to set you free, you're going to run, and the youth kids are going to chase after you and try and rip the lollies off your shirt. That's going to be your initiation. So I put the shirt on, I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready to run. I'm ready to run out the front door, just into the car park, just hide, just do whatever I can. Uh, and the uh, youth pastor gets up and goes, okay guys, so you're gonna chase after Sam. Um, everyone stand up. And I was like, okay, we, we're getting ready. And he's like, get him. <laughs> and suddenly I do not have a head start and 40 youth are rushing one person. I don't know if I've, if I've been more terrified in my life. Uh, it was pretty scary. But one thing I learned after on reflection, definitely not at the time, it was just terror at the time, um, was that when you have a need, when you want something, it will override your values and move you towards action to satisfy that need. And so, in Matthew 5, we have the revelation of need in the first few Beatitudes. And then there is one in the center of the scripture that is all about the value that you then place from that need. Blessed are those who seek righteousness for they will inherit the kingdom of God. You see, it's a flow on. It's a, as you are poor in spirit, as you realize your lack in the face of the kingdom, you will start to desire the things of the kingdom and to desire righteousness. And it's this central sort of message in the middle that, do you want to know how you inherit the kingdom of God? Do you want, do you want to know how you're a new creation? As you recognize that you need the Lord, you go after righteousness. 
You go after the things of the kingdom. And from that, from that value system, from that revelation of righteousness, you flow to action. And so if we have a revelation of need, it should flow on to desiring the righteousness that sits within the kingdom, desiring the things of heaven. And from there, we should have a revelation of what it means to act in the kingdom. The good news is centered around when the kingdom meets a people who know they need the kingdom. And so the kingdom is here and now as we move forward. And so we come to the final set of the Beatitudes. And we would call this a revelation of action. And the final set, they flow on from the rest. If you recognize your need, you go after righteousness, you will act in the kingdom, through the kingdom, by the kingdom. So blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are those who give mercy. Blessed are those who are persecuted. It's the actions of the kingdom. You see, as, as we look towards righteousness, as we start to live in the value of the kingdom, as we, we live with Holy Spirit inside us, recognizing the here and now of the kingdom, the, the, the present and the future context of that in its fullness, as we live this out, this blessed life, this wonderful news that you do not have to be qualified, you do not have to um, have anything going for you, but a recognition of the need for God. That is all the qualifiers you need. That need in itself, as you have that need and you move to mourn of the sins of the world into the meekness of discipleship in the kingdom, desiring righteousness, what flows out is the kingdom into the world. You know, we saw it this week with Kids Reach Out. I love that it is kids who went out. Because so often we go, they're going to go and be silly over there. And when they grow up, they'll do things. And Jesus is like, no, 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 no. No, even the children, even the children inherit the kingdom of heaven. Even the children get to be a part. Even the children get to act. They get to spread the good news. They get to live out the kingdom. There is no junior Holy Spirit. There is just Holy Spirit working inside all. And I almost think children have a better understanding of what it is to need the Lord. They know their deficiencies and they act in the righteousness and the boldness of the kingdom to have action in it. And so we celebrate what they did this week and we should see it as a challenge to do it this week in our own lives as well. Because if kids can do it, we definitely should be able to do it, right? But there is a revelation of action that comes out of the kingdom, that it is for the here and now, just as Jesus is preaching, teaching and moving in the kingdom in His time, it is still true now after His death and resurrection. The kingdom of God is here and now and it is coming in its fullness in eternity. But even right now, it is breaking through and we are to be co-laborers with that. We're to be co-laborers. And so, yes, it is different from the world. The world does not value peace. The world does not value peace. And yet we are called to be peacemakers. The world does not value mercy. And yet we are called, the wonderful news is those who give Mercy out of the kingdom where we'll receive that same mercy that we all need to receive. The world does not value purity of heart, purity of mind, purity of spirit, purity of body. And yet blessed are those who have a pure heart for they will see God. 
as we move to action, we actually are blessed. The wonderful news is we don't only just live it out, but we get to see God as we do it. That we inherit the kingdom for the here and now and for eternity as new creations, desiring righteousness, working in the actions of the kingdom, and we get to see God in it all. And finally, it's, it's the less kind of fun part, but blessed are those who are persecuted. And I think uh, we don't always enjoy hearing this one, but basically Jesus is saying, if you hunger after the things about, of me, if you go after righteousness and you act out of the kingdom, that is the opposite of the world. And so sometimes they might love you. But when it comes in the face of things that we live out day to day, they may not. But you are blessed because I've walked before you in that same life. And you will receive a greater reward than you possibly could in the here and now of the natural. If we were talking about a blessed life, at the like, kind of start of this whole sermon series, Jesus is really just saying, know that you need me. Live like you do. Blessed are those who are righteous, for they will inherit the kingdom. And the good news today is that is for anyone who recognizes that need. But let's hunger after the things of heaven as we go through this series. That the kingdom is here and now. And He wants to move and bring about exactly who He is to the world. Let's pray. God, we, we need You. We need You. We can't do it without you. And really, we don't want to do it without you. Because uh, we've tried and it's uh, not good. So Lord, even as we sit in this moment and have a revelation of just how much we need you, God, we just surrender control to you. Your ways are better. Your ways are higher. And we want to see the kingdom come and so God draw us draw us into that need that longing for more of you that righteousness of the kingdom and let us move out of here desiring to see your kingdom come on this earth your will be done on earth as it is in heaven praise your name Lord Amen